Welcome back to another tabletop review. Today we'll look at the Beretta 92 FS semi-automatic pistol. When I bought this gun more than a decade ago, the Beretta 92 FS was already considered a classic. The military version of the Beretta 92 FS, the M9, had been the handgun of the U.S. Army for more than 20 years. At the time, my son, who was in the military and was on deployment, was carrying a Beretta M9. As a result, the Beretta was on my mind. And you might also recall that this gun had obtained quite a bit of fame in popular movies of the late 1980s like Lethal Weapon and Die Hard. For decades, the Beretta 92 FS went on to be featured in countless hit films and perhaps at least partially that has led to its classic standing today. I really wanted to try one out. Fortunately, I have access to a gun store with a shooting range that rents out a good selection of guns. It's a great opportunity to try out different firearms I wouldn't normally get a chance to experience. One day, they had a Beretta 92 FS available, and it was one of those occasions where everything about the gun in my shooting experience was just about perfect. It also helped that they were having a really good sale that day. The Beretta 92 FS, or M9, is considered one of the most iconic semi-automatic handguns in the world. Let's make sure this one is cleared. Beretta, located in Barisa, Italy, is one of the oldest privately owned firearm companies in the world. Founded in 1526, Beretta has been making all types of guns for about 500 years. But since the early, early 1900s, it's become best known for its handguns. Development of the Beretta 92 FS was based upon Beretta's mid-1940s model 951. The 951 was a large duty-style 9mm combat pistol, which included the open slide design with its exposed barrel. It's important to note that this design allows for the barrel to remain horizontally aligned with the target during cycling of the slide, adding to the pistol's accuracy. The design also featured a double-action, single-action trigger system pioneered by the famous 1929 Walter P-38. In addition, the design included the double-column magazine, like the Browning High Power, for increased capacity. The result was the Beretta 92. Well, what about the letters F and S? In order to meet the requirements of some law enforcement agencies, Beretta modified the Beretta 92 by adding the slide-mounted combination safety and de-locking lever, replacing the frame-mounted manual thumb safety. This resulted in the 92S, which was adopted by several Italian law enforcement and military units. The FS has an enlarged hammer pin that fits into a groove on the underside of the slide. The main purpose is to stop the slide from flying off the frame to the rear if it cracks. This was in response to reported defect slides during the U.S. military testing. In the 1970s, it was agreed that a uniform sidearm would be used by all five of the branches of the United States Forces. And in 1985, it was the Beretta 92, or the M9, that was selected. It is probably best known as the pistol that replaced the vulnerable M1911A1. The main difference between the 92FS and the M9 can be seen in the finish and the sights. The Beretta 92FS standard finish is black Bruneton. On the other hand, the M9 standard finish is blued. The 92FS has a three-dot system for sights, whereas the M9s are two-dot, and the Beretta M9 possesses a unique M9 prefect sequence serial number and some military markings on the barrel. The Beretta 92 continues to be produced in many variations today. The Beretta 92 FS comes in a plastic case, not terribly sturdy. There's an instruction booklet. Inside the case, in addition to the pistol itself, we would find an additional magazine and we find a bit of paperwork there and we had some uh, uh, cleaning brushes and so forth and because this particular pistol uh, came with the crimson trace uh, system on it it also came with the adjustment tools for that as well as uh, some uh, of the little cleaning brush things 
and of course we have the lock. And after a couple of years I actually did break down and, and purchase a uh, fairly good holster for this pistol. Felt that was worthwhile to do. The Brother 92 FS uh, is a 9mm. It is uh, 8.5 inches in length, 5.4 inches in height. Overall width is 1.5. Grip width is 1.3. Unloaded weight is 33.3 .3 ounces. The capacity for the magazine is 15 rounds, and as I pointed out, you get two magazines with your purchase. Higher capacity and uh, lower 10 round restricted capacity magazines are available. Chrome lined match grade steel barrel, alloy frame. Uh, this one, as I said, has a crimson trace uh, laser uh, system on it, so the grips on this one are rubberized and they have a really good feel. Okay, I know this is basically a duty weapon, and when I bought it, I knew I probably wouldn't be trying to conceal carry it very much. I saw it more as a range and home defense gun. Still, I got to say this feels like a big gun for a 9mm with grips that just seem a bit bulky. Of course, uh, you've got a double stack 15 round magazine here and that's partially to blame. And this is an all metal gun, which means it's got some weight to it. It's 39.6 ounces fully loaded, I just weighed it. I'm a fairly large guy with large hands and especially long fingers. So the gun feels good in my hands. But overall, as I said, I'm not so sure that it makes a good choice when it comes to conceal carry for me. Uh, forget for a moment its size. 40 ounces is just a lot of weight. Now, that being said, of all the handguns I own, this is the one my wife prefers to shoot. And she's really good with it. And she's small. She doesn't seem to have a problem with the grip size. Go figure. And yes, I've carried it concealed when weather permitted, but I always knew it was there. I think it looks a bit functional as far as its appearance. Perhaps busy is a better word. It's not sleek, but it's still smooth. It looks and it feels well made. Another con I need to mention comes from complaints about the 92FS locking block in forums suggesting that the problem shows up around 8,000 to 12,000 round mark. And I was also told that some of the military M9s would end up feeling pretty loose after years of service. But to be fair, I also heard that they could have as many as 200,000 rounds put to them during that time. I've also learned that these complaints have often been exaggerated and had to do with early service pistols and that the 92FS is in fact very durable. I've heard complaints about the Beretta 92FS locking lever decocking design to the thumb up action and thumb placement is awkward. I would have to agree, but perhaps that's because I'm used to the 1911 safety. And finally, although not a huge problem for me personally, it is a long length trigger travel in double action mode. And because of the safety decocker design, the first shot is always in double action mode. Subsequent shots are great, but I do find it a little distracting. Of course, there are aftermarket kits designed to improve that. Okay, so the double action trigger pull is long. It's still very smooth. At about 10 pounds, a single action pull is very light. Maybe about 3-4 pounds. Reset is short. Well defined. Speaking of positive, this was uh, the semiotic pistol of choice for the U.S. military, as well as countless police departments for many years. This weapon consistently surpassed the U.S. Armed Forces requirement of a 10-shot group in 3 inches or less at 50 meters. That's about 54 yards. This gun just flat out has exceptional accuracy. Have a nice day. There's no denying this gun's popularity. As I've already said, just look at the movies the Beretta 92 has played a role in. Beginning in the late 80s, throughout the 90s and beyond, this was the cool gun. Because it's so popular, most parts for the Beretta 
92 FS are reasonably priced and virtually every gunsmith out there is familiar with the insides and outs of this gun. It uses a short recoil delay blowback system. It has white dots on the front and rear sights. Competition sights are available. There's a reversible magazine release, then open slide design, and a spring-loaded ambidextrous safety lever that doubles as a decocker. The gun is, gun is super safe. The way the safety is designed allows for multiple levels of accident pre prevention. Because the safety lever functions as a decocking lever as well, you can switch back and forth from single action to double action. This one was made in Italy. Some Beretta 92 FFs are made in the U.S. The M9 is basically made in the U.S. It has excellent quality construction. The action is silky smooth. This gun is very reliable. In 10 years of use, I've never had any failures with any ammo. Not one. It's been actually amazing. In the 90s, this gun looked like it meant business. Dodge this. Even today, it looks solid, it looks cool, and it is. But I wouldn't say it's necessarily attractive. There's a difference, but still cool is cool. Breakdown is very simple. I'm going to remove the magazine. Put the safety off. On the other side here we have a little button. We're going to depress that and then we're going to rotate this unit here. When we do that, that releases the slide. It comes off. The rod and the spring can be removed, and the barrel can be removed. That's basically it. Reassembly is just the reverse. And now we just turn that unit the other way. And There we are. The suggested retail price for the Beretta 92 FS is $675, but I've seen them on sale for $475. I've also seen used ones available for as low as $350. Beretta also has many variations like the 92X at about $900 that has a rail for accessory mounting. To recap, I personally find this pistol to be a great range gun, an excellent shooter. I really enjoy it, and as I said earlier, my wife absolutely loves it. Did I mention that she was really good with it? So there's no doubt this one will continue to see a lot of range time. The Beretta 92 FS is indeed a classic. From its role as a U.S. Army handgun for 30 years and its popularity boosted by Hollywood fame, the Beretta 92 FS or the M9 has earned its place in history and certainly a place of respect in my collection. Any weapon you carry is better than the one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe. Happy trails, Hans.